ahead of US President Joe Biden's visit to Saudi Arabia this month, Israel has intensified talks with the Saudi Kingdom on a number of issues. Among the topics being discussed with the mediation of Washington is sending Muslims living in Israel on the Hajj. The majority of Muslims in Israel are Sunni Arabs, with an Ahmadiyya minority, a big minority. For those who haven't heard of Ahmadiyyas, they're also known as the Qadianis. They're a small sect originating from India. They believe the promised Messiah and Mahdi has already arrived, gone dead and buried in the city of Qadian in India. <laughs> A fairly new sect. They have a sizable minority in Israel and are known to openly carry out religious propagation out there without any fear. Now very soon they'll be able to perform Hajj alongside other Israelis with a direct flight from Israel. The Ahmadis are not permitted to enter the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. There's been fatwas against them and a clear ban on the community from performing Hajj. Countries like Pakistan raise a barrier for the Ahmadis to perform Hajj. By Pakistani law, all Pakistanis are required to sign an oath declaring Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the founder of the Ahmadiyya sect, to be an imposter prophet and all Ahmadis to be non-Muslims and are not allowed to take flights from Pakistan to the pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia. However, soon after the agreement of direct flights between Israel and the Saudis, the Pakistani Ahmadis will start rubbing shoulders with Pakistani Sunnis and Shias. Yep, they'll have direct access to Hajj from Israel. For Israelis who claim to follow the Islamic faith, in order to travel to the shrines of Islam in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, they have to transfer in the capital of Jordan, given the lack of regular flights between Israel and the Saudi Kingdom. But today, things are changing in the region. Over the past five years, Israel, with the assistance of the United States, has been trying to normalize relations with Arab countries. Only a few of them have agreed to this, including the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan and Morocco. This normalization process has come due to attempts by the West to deepen the split between Iran and other countries of the Persian Gulf by creating an Arab-Israeli coalition against Tehran. Anyway folks, what's interesting is Saudi Arabia is changing from Wahhabism to moderate Islam. It does happen every hundred years, you just have to look at history. The extent to how it's changing is remarkable. I'll share another story which happened recently. An Israeli writer who goes by the name Avi Jorish recounted in an article in the Jerusalem Post about the experience of a Jewish delegation's visit to Saudi Arabia. On the way to Medina, the writer said Saudi officials removed signs that read for Muslims only. This change is absolutely huge as there are some in Saudi Arabia who due to hadiths hold the belief that non-Muslims are strictly not allowed in Mecca and Medina. Anyway, we digress. Let me know your thoughts on the matter. Having thought about this, I don't think there's issues with Jews visiting Medina, nor someone from any other religion for that matter. However, I fail to understand why Saudi Arabia keeps changing Islam and the so-called Islamic laws it uses to govern its country, and also why it's trying to get close to Israel, especially since Israel is no way near to resolving the Palestinian issue. Okay, let's leave this video on a positive note. The Holy Quran doesn't provide any support to the concept of banning non-Muslims from the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. During the time of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, after the victory over Mecca by the Muslims, even the pagans who lived in the city and many others frequently visited to hold discussions with the Prophet of Islam without being subjected to any discrimination based on their faith. What Saudi Arabia is doing may be good, however, it's mixing the bad with it because Israel is involved in this equation, who shows no mercy nor remorse to the Palestinians. Thank you.